three begins at the courtroom of the Salem Witch Trials. It's all about to go down. The prosecutor, Judge Hawthorne, starts by questioning Martha Corey, Giles's wife. Suddenly, Giles interrupts the proceedings, furious that the prosecution is lying about his wife. He claims that the real reason Thomas Putnam is charging Martha is so that he can buy up Martha and Giles's land for himself. But the judge doesn't buy it and forces Giles into an empty room next to the courtroom. The interruption has caused such a stir that Judge Hawthorne decides to pause the day's proceedings and goes on to berate Giles for his disobedience. Danforth arrives soon after followed by Francis Nurse, Mary and John Proctor. To everyone's surprise, Mary admits that she has never seen spirits. She says that her accusations against others were just pretend. Mary is sick of all the lies in Salem and wants the truth to come out. Danforth informs John that Elizabeth had sent in a claim that very morning, saying she was pregnant, which would delay her trial for a year. Phew! Nevertheless, John continues to attempt to reveal the truth. He submits the signatures of 91 locals attesting to the good character of Elizabeth, Rebecca and Martha. But Danforth is still convinced that the word of the accused and their advocates cannot be trusted. He orders all the locals to be summoned for questioning. Giles then speaks up now accusing Thomas Putnam of forcing his daughter to accuse George Jacobs just so that he could buy his land as well. However, Giles refuses to provide a source, worried of starting yet another witch hunt. Danforth arrests him for contempt of the court. Is the jail even big enough to hold this many people? Later, during the trial, Mary is brought before Abigail. Abigail denies Mary's assertions that they were lying. John attacks Abigail's character and exposes her strange dancing in the forest. When Danforth begins to question Abigail, she puts her acting skills to use and pretends that Mary is starting to bewitch her with a cold wind. Outraged at Abigail's antics, John reveals their affair. Abigail's hidden motivation is finally being exposed. Meanwhile, Danforth questions Elizabeth about why she fired Abigail. Concerned for her husband's reputation, Elizabeth lies by maintaining that there was no affair. Oh no! Danforth is forced to dismiss John's testimony, even though he yells that she was only lying to protect his reputation. Abigail's acting training continues to impress as she and the other girls claim that Mary's spirit is attacking them in the form of a yellow bird. John desperately tries to convince the others to see reason, but Danforth doesn't budge and sentences Mary to be hanged. Frustrated and completely out of options, Mary turns on John, accusing him of harbouring the devil. This seems crazy, but remember, John's affair with Abigail kicked this whole thing off. Despairing and furious, John breathlessly states that God is dead. He is arrested. Reverend Hale can't believe his ears and angrily quits the court. The curtain falls. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on The Crucible, check out our summary of Act 4.